All right, welcome everybody. We're gonna go ahead and get started with uh, tonight's uh, workshop, virtual workshop uh, on how to buy your first home here in Central PA. Uh, I've got uh, some slides that we'll go through, a presentation and um, take you through some costly mistakes to avoid as a first time home buyer and what to do instead. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Josh Shanley. I am a team leader here with EXP Realty in Central Pennsylvania, and I am part of the Virtual Mortgage Providers team at Nexa Mortgage. So we are a full service uh, real estate and financing option for those who are interested. And we'll get into some of what that means as we go through the presentation here. And in fact, Let's go ahead and uh, and just get started with uh, with the show. So um, once again, this is uh, for Central PA first time home buyers, and I'm going to take you through some costly mistakes that you want to avoid as a first time buyer. So as uh, you know, as or if this is the first time you're buying a house ever, or maybe you just haven't bought a house in a long time. Maybe you purchased one in the past, but haven't done so in a while, you may feel concerned or stressed out, maybe intimidated, maybe a little anxious about the process, maybe a little uncertain. Maybe you're just not sure, you know, if now is a good time. Uh, and uh, if that's the case, we're going to hope to uh, help address those concerns and the stresses and the intimidation and the anxiousness and the uncertainty. Um, I mentioned a little bit at the beginning, but uh, I'll take a minute here uh, to reiterate that my name is Josh Shanley. I'm with EXP Realty, uh, which is a an international real estate brokerage. We help uh, our brokerage can help and serve clients all throughout the United States and uh, over 20 other countries throughout the world. Uh, my team is a local team, but I've got a great network of other agents all throughout uh, the globe, really. Uh, I also am, a, uh, as I mentioned, a, uh, a partner with the virtual uh, mortgage providers team at Nexa Mortgage. Uh, you can look me up on Google and uh, and find uh, you know, Google reviews. Here are a couple uh, uh, that I just picked to highlight here. And and Jen, actually, Jen and, uh, uh, Jen and Jim are first-time buyers that we are closing on their home. They are closing or settling on their home purchase on Monday. So exciting times for them. Uh, I'll introduce our the team that we have for you briefly here um, at different points uh, of the process. You actually, I'm going to switch this to to, to real slideshow mode. Um, uh, as we, if you can monitor uh, and mute as uh, very low, great. Um, so uh, just very briefly, the team, myself, uh, Cosette, Cosette is our local uh, home buyer specialist. She has extensive experience helping first time home buyers. And she is the one that will actually help you when you are ready to start looking at homes and making offers on homes and negotiating that part of the process. Jordan and Colleen are on the financing side. Uh, Colleen is our, our first time home buyer specialist, financing specialist. And some of you uh, watching this here, uh, may end up scheduling a time to chat with Colleen after we uh, we take you through this process. And then Jordan will help you navigate identifying which loan or financing option is going to be the best fit for you and, and how we can make the numbers work on that to your, uh, uh, to your benefit when it comes to financing. Do we need to look at doing something creative? Uh, is there a way that we can uh, move around certain finances uh, to save you money, things of that nature. He's got a ton of experience. And uh, collectively, we have been helping buyers and sellers uh, in Central PA since 2007. We've helped uh, collectively here thousands of clients, and we service all of Central PA and beyond. Uh, so uh, you may have, in fact, if you have friends or family who are uh, who this information may be relevant to, but they're not in Central PA, you can you can share this with them because we can help, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, our network is is uh, nationwide. So we can help folks regardless of where they're at. Uh, it's just that our local team services Central Pennsylvania. So what are the steps 
to home ownership. Very uh, uh, brief overview here. Uh, you come to this class and you learn everything, right? Um, you're going to want, uh, step two, you're going to want to get a pre-approval with a mortgage broker. And I'll, I'll uh, later on in the presentation, I'll talk about why a mortgage broker versus your local bank or even a national bank. Okay. Uh, and we're going to get you uh, FTHB or first time home buyer qualified and get you uh, what we call sort of a guaranteed approval. Uh, then once we've identified that, right, we've got you pre-approved. We have a good idea of your purchasing power and, and, uh, and we're crystal clear or at least uh, pretty clear on the type of home that you're going to want to look for. Uh, then we get you out on the hunt with, uh, with Cosette to, uh, to search for the right properties, find the right properties, to go out and check those out, to make offers, to negotiate, go through the home inspection or the condo or HOA review process, finalize your financing, uh, waive, uh, you know, final waivers, and then actually settle uh, with, uh, you know, if you use our recommended uh, resource, which is simple home settlements. And then the fun part, moving in, right? Moving in, right? Uh, that's uh, that's what it's all about. So that's just a quick overview of the ownership uh, or the, the home ownership steps. Now let's get into the mistakes, how to avoid them and what to do instead. So mistake number one that uh, uh, we'd like to talk about and address here is ignoring or not being aware of first time home buyer incentive programs and offerings. Okay. For example, for example, there are grants available depending on the county you're looking to purchase in and depending on your income, et cetera, where you can get grant money, right? Uh, which grant money is uh, essentially forgivable. Okay. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's not money that you have to pay back, right? Which is a good thing. Uh, and uh, typically these grants are forgivable second mortgages and they can be used as down payment assistance or to help with closing costs. And there are several uh, programs available in the local area here. Uh, or if you're not looking in central PA or you have friends and family who aren't, uh, I can help them with uh, finding what's available in their area. But uh, these links are the top one here is uh, for um, Dauphin County. Uh, I'm sorry, Cumberland County. The middle one here is for Dauphin County. And the bottom one here is for your county. And these counties are offering anywhere from five to $7,000 in grant money. Uh, typically, you have to go through a class, uh, whether in person or on Zoom like this. And, uh, and then you are able to use that, those funds to help with your purchase. And so uh, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but this is a good place to mention now. We will be providing all of you here a replay of this session, as well as recommended resources, uh, some guides, et cetera, and we'll include the links, uh, for example, in here uh, so that you can check it out depending on, uh, you know, depending on what county you're looking in. Okay. So um, free money. Who doesn't want that? Okay. Now let's talk about types of mortgages or financing options, financing programs. Generally speaking, there's four big ones and then there's sort of a, a catch-all. Okay, so the four big ones are conventional, FHA, USDA, which in our area, in, in central PA here, is a wonderful opportunity, and I'll explain why and what that is in a minute. VA, which if you have, uh, if, if you can qualify for uh, a VA certificate of eligibility, uh, is a wonderful program. Uh, and then there are others, and the others uh, typically come in the form of what, what is called non-QM or non-traditional mortgages. And uh, there are programs and options available for first-time homebuyers who don't fit in any of the other four boxes. Uh, point is, regardless of your situation or scenario, we likely have options for you when it comes to the mortgage and financing side. So let's talk a little bit about each of these loan types, just a little here, give you an overview. So the Federal Housing Administration loan, FHA loan, you've probably heard this before. A lot of times people sort of uh, uh, refer to them as first time buyer. It's a first time buyer mortgage, right? Like that, that's that's uh, oftentimes how they're referred to. And it provides mortgage, uh, mortgage insurance on loads, 
loans made by FHA approved lenders throughout the United States. So what does that mean? Well, these are some of the the um, uh, the government entities that that back these programs. And uh, here are the benefits or some of the, the overviews of FHA. OK, number one. You can purchase for as little as three and a half percent down with a credit score of 580 or higher. Okay, so three and a half percent down with a credit score of 580 or higher. Now, you may be thinking or, or wondering, well, what if I don't have the three and a half percent down? Well, there are uh, there are ways that we can overcome that as well. And I'll talk about that here or maybe doing during the, the Q&A time. Many people don't realize this, though. With FHA, you can actually qualify to purchase with 10 percent down at a credit score of 500 plus 500 plus. Okay. Now, not all lenders will loan uh, based upon these these uh, uh, qualifications, but our brokerage has many, many options for this. Uh, some lenders have what they call overlays. So you may talk to a local bank that says, well, um, we don't do FHA loans below uh, a credit score of 640 or 660 or 620 or 600. Uh, well, the reality is these are the government guidelines and we can help you with that. Uh, some other quick notes about FHA. Uh, there, there is easy refinancing with what's called an FHA streamline. So if in the future you want to refinance to a lower rate or to pull out some equity, things of that nature, it's very uh, easy to do so. Uh, many times they have lower mortgage rates uh, compared to some of the other programs. Uh, higher DTI ratios are accepted. Uh, accepted. DTI stands for debt to income ratio. Uh, you can choose between 15 or 30 years uh, fixed rate or adjustable rate terms. There are down payment assistance and grant programs accepted, right? Like the, the grant programs that we were just talking about. And sellers, this is a big one. Sellers can pay closing costs up to 6%. And not only that, there has been a recent change, a, a change, uh, a federal change to the fact that not only can sellers pay closing costs, but sellers can actually provide gifts of equity to help you as a buyer minimize your out-of-pocket costs to buy. Now, if all of that is confusing and not making sense to you, don't worry. Uh, we'll, we'll give you the opportunity to schedule a time to chat and explore these options in more detail, which I'll get to later. Conventional loans. A conventional loan is a uh, home buyer's loan that is not offered or secured by a government, government entity. It's available through guaranteed uh, uh, guarantees by a private lender or uh, there are a couple of uh, government-sponsored enterprises that will uh, back these as well. And, uh, oh, I don't have anything else on here. One thing I want to highlight about this. So a couple of things, actually, on conventional. Uh, sometimes, many times, uh, especially in the current uh, market, the rates are a little bit higher. Many times, uh, they require more down payment, though, though we have conventional loans available for as little as 1% down, 1% down, okay? Um, uh, but in, in a lot of cases, you know, apples to apples, FHA may be the better route for you to go. Okay. May be the better route to go. Okay. So FHA conventional USDA, uh, well, doggone it. Uh, this is what I meant to. So let's compare the two real quick here. So, uh, conventional versus FHA credit score starting at 580, actually 500 with 10% down, but 580 at three and a half percent down. Uh, conventional, typically, you're, you're, you've are you got to have at least a 620 credit score. Uh, we've got 3% down as the down payment, though, as I mentioned, we do have a lender that will do 1% down on conventional. And then there's some differences on the mortgage insurance. Um, right now, right now, FHA, in many cases, is going to be a better option for you as a buyer. You're going to get a lower rate, lower fees, um, all around a better deal. But we'll explore that when you're ready to find the best program and product for you, okay? Now let's compare um, a couple of others that I mentioned here very briefly. So USDA, USDA loans or USDA financing is a government sponsored uh, uh, mortgage option that is available in what are deemed rural areas, okay? Uh, Central PA, the majority of uh, where we live is considered rural, in fact, um, if you look at it, really, the only parts of central PA, generally speaking, that don't qualify are uh, Harrisburg City proper, 
Carlisle Borough, Mechanicsburg Borough, uh, but all of Perry County, uh, all of Franklin and Adams County, the vast majority of Cumberland County, and honestly, the vast majority of Dauphin County all qualify for USDA financing. Um, the important thing to remember here is we, if you, if, if we can pre-approve you for a USDA loan, we need to ensure that when we find the right property, that that falls within the USDA uh, uh, acceptable map, which is very easy to do. We can, we can do that either before we go look or after, okay? We mentioned VA, uh, which also is a 100% financing option, okay? Which quite honestly, uh, these all, the first three here, you can, you can get 100% financing uh, when you include DPA and grant options with FHA, okay? Uh, so it's just a matter of finding which one is going to make the most sense, which one is going to uh, uh, minimize your costs out of pocket, get you the best rate, get you the lowest fees, et cetera. And we're going to help you with that. OK, uh, but just want you to be aware that there are great options. And then I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate here once once again, these are the four main options. But even if you don't fit in one of these four buckets, we may have other options for you. They're called non-QM or non-traditional options. So we've got bank statement programs. We've got um p l program. So if you're self-employed or uh, uh, even, you know, you're, you're part of the gig economy or whatever the case may be, uh, most likely we have an option that will fit for you, especially if you've got two out of two out of the three pillars that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Okay. Now here's what you can just very briefly, what you can and can't use for down payment and closing costs, down payment and closing costs, right? Because there's going to be some costs to this. Uh, we're going to try and minimize your out of pocket, but there's going to be some. So you can use 401k or retirement accounts in most cases. Okay. You can use gifts, gifts, right? Uh, now it has to be documented, uh, but it can be family or friends, uh, gifts. You can use stocks, bonds, cash, et cetera. Uh, this one's new. I mentioned this already, but the seller can actually gift you equity, which if that's not making sense, we can go deeper in the Q and a, or when you schedule a quick chat with, uh, with one of our financing specialists. Seller concessions, remember, um, we talked about how uh, on FHA, the seller can actually uh, uh, provide 6% seller help. Uh, the, the, the max seller help varies a little bit by programs. So you can see 6% on FHA and USDA, uh, VA is 4% and uh, conventional is 3% unless there's more than 10% down. So there's some different things there. But the point is the seller can help you help contribute to your ability to purchase the home, okay? And we can help you when we get to that point of negotiation. Now, the ones in red, we can't use for down payment and closing costs. You can't use a credit card. You can't use other loans or undocumented cash, okay? Uh, if, if we just have to have to, we have to have a way to document the cash or the funding source, okay? Uh, I think because of, uh, you know, how we're doing here, I'm gonna save the five minute Q&A for the end. We're going to just keep rolling along here. We're going to save the five minute Q&A for the end. So mistake number two is waiting to get a pre-approval. Okay. What do I mean by that? We've had instances, first time home buyers, where for one reason or another, we get out and we start looking at houses before they've been pre-approved. Um, and the mistake here is, and the problem becomes, you may get all excited about a home that you can't get approved for. And uh, that just creates a, a, a unrealistic set of expectations. So one of the many reasons for getting pre-approved ahead of time is so that we can identify your purchasing power and get to work on finding the best home that fits your needs within the, you know, the, the pre-approval uh, amount. Now I mentioned as long as you have two out of these three pillars, I kind of, there was some foreshadowing on this a couple of minutes ago. As long as you have two out of these three pillars that I'm going to talk you through very briefly here, there are options for you uh, when it comes to mortgage financing. Okay. So the three pillars, when it comes to mortgage approval or pre-approval, and then ultimately the final approval are credit, income, and down payment. Okay. And I'll, unpack these a little bit more, right? So credit, your credit score. We've already talked about this, right? We've got options at 500 plus, FHA at three and a half percent down at 580 plus, uh, VA in some cases has no credit requirement. 
USDA 600 to 620, depending on the situation, there are exceptions to that. Okay. Um, below 500, uh, we may need to look at doing some credit direction. And we offer that at no cost for, uh, for, you know, our clients. Um, and we can chat about that and what that looks like. Number two is income. So do you have in income? Is it consistent? And can you document it? Do you have income? Is it consistent? And can you document it? And there can be all types of different income, okay? Uh, it doesn't have to just be W-2 income, right? But there needs to be some kind of income. Number three is down payment or assets, right? We talked about the different ways that you can, uh, uh, or the different, uh, um, yeah, different ways that you can and can't come up with down payment or closing costs, right? So do you have retirement account, 401k? Can you get a gift from mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or whoever the case may be? Uh, do you have stocks, bonds, or other cash that you could use for the purchase? Uh, can we negotiate with the seller to gift some equity? For the down payment right and then we talked about seller concessions as well okay so down payment assets something to cover those uh those costs and fees uh the loan pre-qualification um it it will help us okay us determine how much you can afford okay how much you can afford uh to spend on a home based upon the three pillars your credit your income and your assets and the pre-qualification can help you determine what level of house we can qualify for, your purchasing power, mentioned that already. Uh, it can increase your bargaining power when negotiating with a, a seller, right? If we're fully pre-qualified, uh, that helps us from a negotiating standpoint. You'll be able to estimate your monthly payment and total investment, the total cost. And during this process, we'll be able to identify which loan product will best, best fit your wants and needs. Not just your uh, which loan product, but which lender is giving us the best deal on that loan, okay? So tips for a simple loan uh, approval, the things you should and shouldn't do, the, the do's and the don'ts. Uh, you should call, text, email us if you have questions. Continue living at your current residence. Continue paying your mortgage or rent. Continue to use your credit card as normal, as normal. Keep working at your current employer. Keep your same insurance company. Uh, stay current on all of your existing accounts and expect requests for a, a additional documentation throughout the process. Okay, this is a big one. Uh, for you to qualify, you're going to have to provide documentation. And the, the faster and the more thorough you're able to provide that documentation, the easier the process is for you and us and everyone involved the things that you should not do, things you should avoid. Making any large purchases, a big furniture purchase, buying a new car, things of that nature. Changing bank accounts or making large cash deposits, okay? Transferring balances. Closing credit card accounts. Don't close credit card accounts, okay? You should not consolidate your debt onto one or two cards. You should not apply for new credit or take out a new loan or co-sign on a loan or max out or overcharge on your credit card accounts. Okay, this is a big one here that one will, will just make the process smooth and help you and all of us avoid some, some pain throughout the process. Okay, underwritten pre-approvals and rate locks. So underwritten pre-approvals uh, are where we fully, we fully underwrite and review your income, your credit, and your assets, uh, we get the full documentation. It becomes more reliable and we can tell you your maximum qualifying amount, okay? Um, th this is, uh, this is um, the, the difference between us just making a guess at what you might be able to buy versus us saying, this is what we can do. And then a rate lock is when we get to the point where we're making an offer and we've got an accepted offer, we're gonna lock in the rate so you know what your payment's going to be and, and uh, what, what your interest rate's going to be, what your monthly payment's going to be, uh, what your total costs are going to be, et cetera, okay? Okay, uh, mistake number three, using your, whether it's local bank or national bank. Now, there are always exceptions to the rule, but generally speaking, generally speaking, 
when you use a local bank or even a large bank, uh, number one, the the uh, the loan is going to be more expensive. In many cases, you're treated like just another number. Uh, they will often have stricter guidelines or overlays. I kind of mentioned that already earlier. Overlays, for example, I mentioned that we've got FHA products at 580 with three and a half percent down. Your local bank may say, "Well, I'm sorry, we can't do that unless you're a 640." Okay. Um, they they don't really cater to specific situations outside of their their typical or general box, right? It's got to fit in this nice little box. And larger banks, many cases, uh, don't offer down payment assistance programs, okay? Again, there's there could be exceptions to the rules. We've had a few times where uh, clients going directly with the bank makes the most sense, but honestly, 99.9 .9 times out of 100, it's going to be better to work with a mortgage broker because um, we work independently. We can find the best fit for you, the borrower, from a wide selection of financial institutions. And in fact, our virtual uh, mortgage providers team at Nexa Mortgage, we can go and shop over 200 lenders on your behalf. We're, we're like your personal mortgage shopper. We're gonna take the information that we gather and we're gonna go and find you the best deal possible when it comes to the mortgage financing uh, portion of this. And we often have access to better rates, lower fees, et cetera, because we can shop and because we have lenders competing for your business through us, right? So uh, we act as your mortgage or your personal mortgage shoppers. We'll shop over 200 wholesale lenders to find you the best deal, lowest rates, fees, down payment, et cetera, potentially saving you thousands, tens of thousands, or even possibly hundreds of thousands of dollars on interest, okay? It can add up. The interest on mortgage uh, mortgages and financing can add up and can, can add up fast, okay? Mistake number four to avoid, mistake number four to avoid, buying directly from a builder. The truth about buying straight from a builder. Number one, oftentimes builders will offer incentives, but just like, um, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you've all seen the uh, the signs on the, on the corners of busy intersections, the furniture store, they're having a going out of business sale, right? And you, you go in only to realize, a, they're not going out of business, and B, they've marked up the furniture so that they've slashed it by 60% back down to what it really should be. And builders use this same type of strategy. And in many cases, in many cases, we can get you a better rate and save you more in the long run, okay? Reason number two, why you should uh, avoid buying straight from a realtor, I'm sorry, a builder, is that when we're working with you, we work for you. Our fiduciary responsibility is to you. Whereas the builder's sales agent works for the builder. It, they've got to keep their boss, right? Their boss's best interests in mind. We're working on your behalf to negotiate the best deal, the best incentives, uh, the biggest discount, uh, uh, the most seller help, maybe even in the current market, getting the builder to gift you some equity to uh, minimize your cash outlay. Uh, we can help you make the best decisions financially uh, financially as you build. And you know, another big thing is we're another set of eyes so that uh, the builder isn't cutting corners during the building process, which unfortunately does happen a lot. And we're knowledgeable about what to look through at uh, different inspections and final walkthroughs, et cetera. Okay, mistake number five, skipping a home inspection. Now this has become very commonplace, uh, especially in 2021 and 22, when the market was just scorching hot. Many buyers were uh, skipping or opting out of a home inspection. And we still today have clients that choose to do that. But I always recommend them at least consider a home inspection because with a home inspection uh, or without one, let's say, you are 
you, you, you're you not fully aware of, of what may be hiding behind X or Y or Z, right? When, when you pay for a professional home inspection, which is going to cost you about $400, right? But it's the cost of peace of mind. Um, you're bringing in a professional to find what are the red flags that I'm not seeing, that we're not seeing, okay? When you skip a home inspection, you also lose some of your negotiating power. You risk inheriting safety issues such as mold and radon and carbon monoxide or even electrical issues. Uh, um, you know, clients that we're working with now, there were some electrical issues that we found on the uh, on the inspection and uh, we were able to find those up front and negotiate for them to be addressed. They weren't major, okay? In the reality, they weren't major issues, but issues nonetheless. And you don't wanna mess around when it comes to electrical stuff, right? Um, you, you also miss out on having a forecast of future repair costs, okay? If you're buying a, a uh, an existing home, right? You're not buying a new home. Um, you want to know, when am I going to need to replace the hot water heater? When am I going to need to replace the furnace? When may, might I need to replace the uh, garbage disposal, which I actually had to do at my house today, right? When am I going to need to replace the, the built-in microwave? Things of that nature. And then you're also oblivious to illegal or... Um, uh, no code additions and remodels, right? If people just, you know, uh, did things that uh, were, were illegal or not up to code. So how do you feel now? How do you feel now? We, we spent about a half an hour going over some of the ins and outs, mistakes to avoid different programs and financing options. Hopefully now you feel a little bit more confident, a little bit more informed, and uh, maybe ready to get serious about the home buying process. Well, if that is the case, number one, we're gonna have Q&A time here, but I wanna offer you two options, two options as your next best step. Option number one, you can schedule a quick chat with Colleen on our team. She's our first time home buyer financing specialist. And you can either scan the QR code on the right or go to joshvips.com forward slash chat. And we'll do our best to get that link in the chat as well. Okay. So you can go there and uh, it looks like this. Okay. You can pick a date and time and uh, you can choose what topics you would like to discuss with Colleen. And uh, once you enter your name and your email and your phone, the best number for her to reach you, uh, you'll get a confirmation. You can add it to a Google calendar or if you use Outlook or, or iCal and, and we'll remind you of when the session is. The second option, the second option is you can go and create uh, your free account and get started with your application, get started with the pre-approval process at appwithjosh.com. Okay, you can go to appwithjosh.com or you can scan the QR code on the left. And when you do, you'll get taken to a page that looks like this. Uh, you're gonna click the, 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 uh, the blue that says create account. And you'll just choose your name, email, and a password, and you can get started with the process. And, and we can help uh, any step of the way as you go along. So with that said, I want to open it up uh, for any Q&A that, uh, that you may have. You can either post your questions in the chat, or I think, yeah, I think the chat would be best, or if you want to raise your hand, if you'd like, uh, if you'd like to ask, uh, I, I can unmute you, and, and you're certainly more than welcome uh, to ask your question here. Or if you're uh, camera shy or microphone shy, you can just schedule a time to chat with Colleen and uh, ask her any questions. Or you can even get back to me. Uh, most likely, I'm the one that invited you here today. You can uh, you can call, text, or email me, and I'm happy to to chat with uh, with you and answer questions and and see uh, you know how we can best steer you uh, in the right direction. So anyone have questions that we uh, that we missed or things that maybe weren't clear about the home buying process? And while we're waiting for questions, I want to I want to cover um, just a couple of things that I mentioned throughout, but I'm going to reiterate here. Number one, we're going to get the the uh, the recording, the replay of this presentation, this uh, this virtual workshop to everyone tomorrow morning. And we're going to have some additional resources so that you can just 
feel more comfortable with the process. We have a, a guide for first time home buyers, which I'll include, will include the slides uh, that uh, of this presentation, including the links to uh, the Cumberland County first time home buyer grant program, the Dauphin County first time home buyer grant program, and the York County uh, first time home buyer grant program. So we'll get all of that out to everyone uh, in the morning. And uh, it looks like it looks like there are no questions, which either means I did an incredible job, or you're all uh, you're all uh, a little intimidated by Zoom, which is fine either way. Uh, oh, here's one. I owned a house five years ago. Would I still be a first-time home buyer? That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, generally speaking, for the most part. Uh, being that you haven't owned, if I'm understanding the question question correctly, being that you haven't owned for uh, five years, you could still qualify as a first-time home buyer. Now, you may or may not be able to qualify for grant money, but you will likely be able to A, uh, qualify for FHA financing, and B, will likely qualify for several of our down payment assistance uh, uh, programs and offerings. Thank you. That is a... Uh, Fantastic question. Appreciate that. Any other questions? Uh, and while I'm waiting for that, I, I, uh, if this was helpful and valuable, I would ask that you please share the love. So we're going to send you the replay and all of the additional, the the the, the first time home buyer guide that I mentioned, uh, the links, etc. And if you have friends or family members or coworkers who might be interested in this information, I ask that you share the love, S forward the email to them, or, uh, or you know, uh, 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 send a group email and include me on that. However you feel comfortable, please share the love because um, here's what I am certain of. Our area here, Central PA, and our country at large is better when we have more homeowners and less renters. Pride of ownership is a real thing. And uh, we are dedicated to helping, uh, you know, uh, do what we can to address that um, problem. So uh, I don't plan, this is another great question. I don't plan on buying a house for another 90 days. What should I do now to get ready? Here's what I would, this is a wonderful question, William. Um, I would get started today, okay? Here's the reality. If you're thinking about buying a home 90 days from now, it's actually right now the time to get started because here are some general guidelines. It's going to take 10 to 15, sometimes 30 days for the pre-approval process. Then it's gonna take another two, four, six weeks to find the right property and the right home. These are averages. And then it's gonna take another four to six weeks to actually be able to settle. All of a sudden, that 90 days that seems like a long time becomes pretty short. So there's absolutely no cost or obligation to schedule a time to chat with Colleen. You can scan the QR code on the right, or you can go to joshvips.com forward slash chat, or or you can do both of these uh, for, for uh, you know, if, if you're a go-getter. Uh, you can go to appwithjosh.com, create a free account, or scan the QR code on the left. Neither of these will cost you a thing, and we can get started with identifying which products and programs are going to be the best fit for you. And, and, and this is a big one, is there anything that we can do while we have that window of time? to help you uh, qualify for a better rate or a better program or product, okay? So the sooner you get started, the better, right? You it, the, the more ducks you have in a row, the, the easier the process will be. And also the more negotiating power you'll have when we do find the right home. And one last thing on that, if you're thinking about buying a new home, we've got to get started sooner than later. Because unless you're buying a quick move uh, spec home, we're talking five, six, eight, nine months 
before you're going to be able to uh, uh, to move in. But if you are, if that's the route you're thinking, we've got to get started sooner than later. Uh, my sister is a real estate agent. Can I still work with you if I use her as my agent? Of course, of course. We would love the opportunity to work with you and help you on the mortgage and financing side. And we totally understand. Many of you may already know someone or, or have someone in mind for that. Uh, but as I mentioned, um, and I'll, I'll bring up again here, we are full service on both the real estate and the mortgage and financing side. And it can be either or both, either or both. Uh, another great question. Thank you for that. Um, okay. Once again, we'll get uh, the replay, the uh, first time home buyer guide, and some other resources out to you, including the links with the grant programs, et cetera. If you haven't already done so, done so go schedule uh, a quick chat with Colleen, our first time home buyer financing specialist at joshvips.com forward slash chat or scan the QR code that you see on your screen to the right and or create your free account uh, and get started with your app at appwithjosh.com or by scanning the QR code to the left. There is absolutely no cost or obligation to get started with either of those options. Uh, and the sooner, the better. If you're thinking about, here's what I would say. If you're, if you had any thoughts about buying in the next six to nine months, you might as well get started now. So you can put yourself in the very best position um, financially um, and, uh, and just from a planning perspective. Thank you so much uh, for the great questions and uh, for all of you spending some time here tonight. Uh, Renee says, thank you uh, for the invite. I will talk with Colleen right on, Renee. Uh, it was my pleasure. We'll get everything out to you uh, tomorrow. And uh, we look forward to working with many of you and helping you realize the uh, dream of home ownership uh, here in Central PA or, or uh, beyond, if that's the case. So thanks again. Take care and uh, hopefully chat soon.